Okay, uh, today I'm going to talk to you about indoor plants or house plants. And uh, don't we all love house plants? And um, today I'm going to talk about our atrium, which is specially, specially built for this particular part of the house, which is about 25 meters uh, in length and approximately 10 meter wide. And in this particular atrium, I have got up to 80 house plants. And I don't know its scientific names, but uh, all of them, but I do know quite a few of them. But most commonly used uh, names that I'll be using in most of my plants here. Now, to start off with, I should um, start from here, perhaps. This particular plant here is known as a zigzag plant, as you can see why specifically why it's called zigzag plant, and some people call it as fishbone uh, plant as well, or selenaceous um, anthos. So that's its uh, scientific name, but I won't go by its scientific name because sometimes it's full of letters and it can be quite lengthy to uh, write or to pronounce. So sometimes we, our tongue that does get twisted pronouncing this uh, scientific names. Uh, I will go by its common name so everyone knows what those plants are all about. So, and I'd also like to talk about um, the conditions that it likes and uh, why have I got the, them in this particular atrium and, uh, and the habitat it perhaps lives in and trying to create the same type of uh, environment and habitat for them. Um, as you know, most, um, like I call them, basically the family of succulents really, this uh, Ripsalis uh, plant, they um, seem to thrive in very little water and a good drainage. So the medium here I have used is, is coarsey type of sandy, gritty type of soil together with um, uh, garden, garden mix soil or uh, uh, garden soil. So it, you can buy them from any of the garden centers or bunnings and they would um, specifically would have them for suc succulent plants or cactus, cacti, uh, cacti mix or something like that. And you just add a bit of um, peat moss or a bit of um, moisture holding or you could use the water uh, water granules to, to 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 have some water in them. So this is one of the plants that I've got growing here, and you can see it's fairly dark condition, but it seems to grow quite well. It wouldn't mind sun, of course, and a bit of sun doesn't hurt this particular plant. And it could it can get leggy if, if the condition isn't right. So every now and then I like it to show a bit of sunshine and I might take it from here and hang it out in the front of the house for it to get a bit of sun. Not direct sunlight because it's not used to its full sun. So we have to gradually try to introduce them into the sun. And then from there we come into the Boston fern. This particular fern has altogether different type of medium or the uh, or the soil that I use. It generally is high level of peat moss. I could use a bit of sphagnum because sphagnum does tend to hold the moisture and um, and leaf litters or humus and all that type of stuff. This particular plant, uh, fern would thrive in it. And my atrium just is full of ferns because it's the ideal growing conditions for them. And this particular uh, is a nip, uh, lipsis uh, fern, as it says, and it's a pendula or some. It might be actually pendula because I don't know how long this particular plant is going to grow into. Sometimes they can grow up to two meters, so they they're actually quite prolific, prolific when it starts growing. It could be also exalter, so I'm not quite sure whether it actually is a uh, pendula or exalter fern. And um, I have to find that one out. And here we've got Penteptera, which is also a Ripsalis. And I've had this plant probably about a year. And in that year, it has grown up approximately another 30 centimeters or so. It could be about 36 centimeters from here to up to here. 
and um, it will literally, if I let it grow, it probably will reach right up to the ground and it's doing quite well and it does do require coarsey, sandy soil for it for good drainage. And it is also, I call it sort of like a suc succulent type of a plant, all that it's are and they do grow amongst the big uh, trees and, and holds, holds onto the um, um, in, in the little gaps that the trees have and it's a tropical and it's uh, probably um, comes from the Amazon uh, Mexican region which is a very tropical plant and uh, it just loves the condition here that I've supplied to say in here another Lepispium this particular plant is called it's a funny looking thing because it's got this long um, stem coming in and then has its leaves growing here and it really makes a quite an interesting indoor plant and in the right condition I guess it, it, it would probably have more leafy conditions like this one's here it's probably not getting enough sunlight but it seems to be doing okay in this particular environment and I'm quite happy with it how it's growing then we come to here is a prochectus which is a um, quite a long uh, uh, you can see that it's growing into quite a cylindrical uh, shape, uh, tubical shape. And this would grow quite long as well. And it has some dainty little flowers on them. It hasn't flowered yet, but um, I'm hoping that it will surprise me one day. It seems to be loving its condition. And, um, and then after this particular lot, I will talk to you about uh, more ferns. So, be prepared to watch the next um, session or the part two of my video. Goodbye.